Well, Google is the leader in self-driving technology and has obtained legal approval for its test cars on public roads in Nevada, California, Florida, and Michigan. And other testing by other companies is taking place legally in other countries. So how long before we have fully autonomous vehicles that can legally drive on public roads? To help us answer that, we're joined by Bryant Walker-Smith. He's the assistant professor in the School of Law and in the School of Engineering at the University of South Carolina and chair of the Emerging Technology Law Committee of the Transport Research Board of the National Academies. Brian, thanks for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure. Brian, what are the biggest legal issues facing the automotive industry when it comes to self-driving cars? So the key challenge is that the relevant technologies have yet to reach a demonstrated level of socially acceptable risk. That's a mouthful. In other words, first, how safe do these need to be? We have not yet defined that. They can't be perfect, but hopefully they will be better than the average human driver. What is the precise metric? Once we've established that, how is it demonstrated? What does the law require to be shown in order to establish that a vehicle is sufficiently safe? And then finally, once we have that threshold, how do we get the technologies reliably to that point um, because they're not there yet? So it's a technical, legal, and social challenge that we still face. Well, Brian, already some self-driving technology is very much available, very much legal, and fitted standard on many cars. Uh, Radar-based cruise control varies your speed if you come up behind a car that's going more slowly in front of you. We've got automatic braking systems. Some cars that can even pull off automatic hands-free parallel parking, something I'd need. There are no legal issues there. So is this not just viewed as an expansion of, of those technologies? In many ways it is. Um, the incremental approach to automation, having the computer do more and more and the human driver less and less, fits very comfortably with the existing legal regime. The challenges are where that begins to break down at the far reaches of automation. So when a human is no longer engaged in any meaningful sense, do they still have legal obligations even though they don't have technical requirements. Um, when we see different service models, different vehicles that don't quite look like cars today, how will law treat them? It's concepts that are further from the present that pose the greatest legal challenges. Well, right now, the self-driving cars, they have to have the same manual controls as ordinary vehicles, and there has to be a licensed alert driver who can take over at any time. Is this the idea? Will this be the model going forward that there will have to be a licensed driver or do you anticipate it to be at a place where drivers can uh, be doing their work or be able to sleep or it can even be a child in the car, somebody that, that doesn't have a license? Mm -hmm. So the requirements you mentioned were imposed by the few U.S. states that have expressly regulated these technologies for the purpose of testing. And for research and development testing, they do require a trained human driver to supervise the machine at all times because as a test vehicle, all sorts of things can happen. It's still a prototype. In the future, the technologies are going to drive that. So some technologies may still require limited human engagement, a human to be ready to immediately resume driving or perhaps resume driving within a few seconds if required. As the technologies become better, then that human role will be less and less. And at that point, regulators and legislators and uh, police will need to decide what is reasonable for a human, what is appropriate, what is vigilance sufficient to make the entire driving experience safe. Well, Brian, another issue is who would be liable in the event of an accident? That will be a very fact-specific inquiry. Just as today, if two vehicles crash, we need to ask about the circumstances, about the behavior of the drivers, about the environment in order to determine who is liable. In the future, if an automated vehicle crashes, we'll likely ask the same questions. What was the human supposed to be doing, if anything? Were they? Did they properly maintain the car? Did they use it in the right environment? Did the manufacturer properly instruct the human user about that? Did the manufacturer supervise the human to the extent that was required? Did the vehicle make a mistake? If so, what what caused the mistake? Was it incorrect data? Was it incorrect programming? Was it some other failure? All of those will need to be considered after the fact to determine in that specific instance who is liable. Generally, well, certainly, we can expect. Mm -hmm. 
we're, we're going to have to leave it there, Brian. Certainly a lot of legal issues that would have to be overcome and a lot of technological hurdles as well. Some analysts saying we could have these cars on the road by 2020. We'll see about that. All right, Brian Walker-Smith, thank you so much. Assistant professor in thank the you. School of Law. And thank you. And in the School of Engineering at the University of South Carolina.